we manufacture and compound almost 600 different medications, all the way from men's health, women's health, hormone replacement, longevity medicine, anabolics, mm -hmm. weight management, dermatology. I mean, you know, everything under the sun that we, we consider functional medicine or integrative health. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're, they're, they're cross, uh, they, they, they cross each other. So a man that's on hormone replacement therapy or testosterone, you know, that may cause androgenic alopecia, which then puts him into the dermatology space. And, you know, if he has testosterone, he may also have erectile dysfunction. So then we are, we're in sexual wellness space. And, you know, if you have problems with your sexual wellness, you may be caused by cardiovascular issues. So now, you know, and those cardiovascular issues may be caused by obesity. So now you're in the weight management space. And so we're learning in order to treat the patient holistically, we need to bring all these areas of treatment together and then give the patient a, a, a program where they can be fully optimized across all areas of health. I love that. And one of the really defining moments for having you on, there was, there was one. And this is when everybody started talking about the GLP-1s, the, whether it's ozempic, semaglutide, or GIPs like trizepatide. And they are so cost prohibitive for people. And then I started seeing physicians saying, don't use compounding pharmacies, compounding pharmacies, and this whole slew of misinformation which couldn't be further from the truth, which I'm gonna have you explain. They're gonna say, oh, it's not regulated, all of these things and that you should stay away from it. And I don't think that the physicians were um, misintentionally doing that, but they were uninformed. And they are making statements that are really taking health away from the general population. Because when you buy through a compounding pharmacy these medications, they are they're affordable. Right. Tell me some of the misconceptions that people have around compounding form, uh, pharmacies, compounded medications. Please clear it up for us. <laughs> I love to. You know, compounding pharmacies, we are regulated by each individual state board of pharmacy as well as the FDA. And so we are one of the most regulated industries in the world. Think about it, you're, you're making drugs that are many of them going to be injected into humans and there is nothing more dangerous than injecting an unsafe drug into a person and so there there are mountains of rules and regulations dictating what compounding pharmacies can and can't do and because we are regulated we get inspected all by every time. by all yeah. the time by all these different agencies on a regular basis to ensure that we are meeting the standards and the standards are very high and so you know, if these drugs that are being made in compounding pharmacies and outsourcing facilities, they are being made in clean rooms with environmental monitoring in place, environmental sampling. I mean, we have uh, incubators with, with agar plates just filled. I'm coming to see it. I, I got to see this for myself. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, so we're making these medications in the highest standards that uh, uh, you, could see, you would see inside of a pharmacy. And if you're getting your medications from an outsourcing facility, which is an, a new type of entity that the FDA created mm -hmm. about 11 years ago with the passage of the Drug Quality Security Act, these facilities actually meet the same standards as Big Pharma, good manufacturing practices. Are all compounding pharmacies created equal? Uh, I would say not. You know, while we all have to meet a minimum threshold, some of us go above and beyond what is required. Uh, for example, you know, uh, we actually incorporate several aspects of good manufacturing practices into our compounding pharmacy to be able to improve the accuracy and safety of our medications. Mm. And so sourcing your medications from a compounder that meets these higher standards is one that is, uh, um, of the FDA and many other regulators, say, are, are recommended. How would someone know? Uh, so there are only a handful of compounding pharmacies that also have uh, mature 503B outsourcing facilities as uh, uh, under their corporate organization. And uh, the way to know is you know, it's, it's advertised on their website. 
you know, you can see that they're both considered a 503A compounding so pharmacy. So they should look for a 503A compounding pharmacy only, yeah? Oh, uh, but that's also, that's also co-owned by a 503B outsourcing facility or sources mm. their sterile medications from a 503B outsourcing facility. Mm. That's not saying that compounding pharmacies in general are unsafe. They, you know, we all have to, we, all the drugs that leave our facilities do have to meet the minimum specifications of quality, sterility, endotoxin, purity, potency, to make sure that the drugs that we are putting on the market are safe and effective. Mm. Can you talk a little bit about the education around or what we need to understand as both providers and patients as, say, medications like testosterone for women, which right now is not FDA approved but can be used off-label, or nandrolone, which... Um, I think is FDA approved for, is it wasting or osteoporosis or is it an off-label type drug and what does off-label even mean? Great questions. You know, uh, to start with nandrolone, you know... Uh, Which is an anabolic steroid. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, it's actually everything the company pharmacy does is technically off-label because none of our drugs are FDA approved. You know, everything that we make while the ingredients are sourced from... Mm. FDA approved manufacturers and suppliers. The indications that prescribers use could be for anything, just like they could do uh, for any uh, FDA approved medication as well. And for, uh, for nandrolone, you know, this medication, of course, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a perfect example of a drug that was discontinued, orphaned, taken off the market in 2007. Do we know why? Uh, the drug company says it was for reasons of safety, but as we know, mm -hmm. You know, nandrolone, if used properly, is a very safe medication and uh, can be life-saving yes. in many instances. Yes. And actually, it was used to save the lives mm -hmm. of patients with HIV or AIDS, you know, and when they were going through wasting syndrome in the early 80s, when there was no FDA-approved drug to help to, to treat AIDS or wasting syndrome for that matter. So what we saw is buyer's clubs opening up in our city and many others across the country. And explain to people what the Buyers Club is, kind of the idea behind it. Yeah, it's, you know, uh, if anybody's ever seen the movie Dallas Buyers Club, uh, starring Matthew McConaughey, amazing movie, by the way, definitely have to watch it. You know, it's it was a way where patients uh, 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 with HIV, you know, would go to these groups that would provide them a membership to be able to give them access to therapies, substances, that were either not FDA approved, but were known to be effective in preventing wasting syndrome. And yeah, nandrolone was one of those substances. You know, we learned that really the best way to prevent wasting syndrome is to give patients anabolic substances, things that build muscle. Right, and which by the way, that has a extremely negative connotation, mm -hmm. but I was looking at the history and I think a large component of the negative stigma that anabolics has and ha you know that it currently has came from through sports right it really happened through sports and that's when people were saying um testosterone use should be banned um nandrolone use should be banned and sports that domain is so much different than health and longevity and it created a misunderstanding mm -hmm. for both patients about safety and efficacy surrounding testosterone, other anabolics, and the legality of use, which these drugs are legal. Mm -hmm. And it has done a huge disservice for health and wellness.